What's up my loves? My name is Paige, this is Paige with the Paige, and today we're going to be checking in for my goals at the end of quarter two. Hello my darlings, welcome to this video. Today I want to be looking at all of the goals I made at the end of 2023 and how I'm currently progressing in them. I set a bucket ton of goals and I'm just working away at them. This is going to be the first video in going through my mid-year things, so my stats, the mid-year freakout tag, and this goals check-in, so you have that to look forward to if you're interested. But basically I'm just going to run through the goals, how I'm traveling, and oh lordy. It's been a real interesting year. So mine are broken up into different categories, with reading goals, community goals, and channel goals, and then I also have side quest community challenges. My first reading goal is to read 52 books, and this is done. At the end of June, I was sitting at 68 books read. My second goal was 60 plus percent of my reads being over 300 pages. And I said in my quarter one check-in, I was curious to see how this is gonna fluctuate, and I'm curious how this is going to continue to fluctuate. I'm sitting at 60.3 percent, and that is it. I am just scraping by, but also, I'm starting a lot of series that are a bit shorter and finding joy in shorter books at the moment. So I'm not mad about it. I'm just curious to see how we're going to maintain this. The next goal was to finish or catch up on more series than I start. I have caught up on four series and I've already finished 10. What? I have started seven series though and I still have three more that I need to read for bookish peeps. Then we have my bookish peeps control my life and I want to get a bingo and or complete all the life challenges my friends have set for me. And this is the chaos machine. This is the utter chaos machine. So I have read 12 out of the 38 books that are on this list, which is 31% of the books read at the halfway mark of the year. And I've done activities for four out of my 10 friends. And I've also got a few of my activities done, which is surprising. So I'll leave the graphic here. It's just helpful. Let's see. So I might go through each of the goals and then mark off the ones that need little stickers. So top is randomize my series. And I haven't done this yet. The next is our flag means death fan fiction list from Kara. And I have not done this yet, but I've read two out of the 12. I have read the David Bad book from Jacqueline, which was Kingdom of Copper. And I have actually finished the series and done the Empire of Gold. I haven't read Erin's A Book with Aliens but Set on Earth. I haven't had a very intentional flow day yet. There was one day that was kind of, but not today I'm doing this. I haven't done Crystal's charity event. I'm almost done with the Ashes, Full Metal and Helsing. I have done all three Helsings and currently in the second Full Metal. I have done a Sydney trip, which was Zoe's activity. I have not touched the Poppy War, thanks Kara. I have started the Graceling series, it was Mel's pick, but I haven't continued on yet. At the end of June, I hadn't started the Thursday Murder Club, which was Brittany's pick. For Amy's Life Challenge, the first book I pick every month needs to go towards a goal, and I have been successfully doing that. I have not started Zoe's books, which is the I Am Faye series. We had marked off the D6 for Ash. I had started Soul Eater, but I haven't made any progress for Ren this quarter. I have read two Ice Planet Barbarians. I think I might have read the first one in quarter one. So I've read one more for Erin's books. I haven't gone on a picnic, which was Mel's life activity. I have done a jigsaw, which was Brit's pick. And oh my God, it was glorious. I think I'd read one of the Timothy Blake series, which is Crystal's books. I haven't continued on yet. The one week one shelf we'd marked off. Jacqueline's life challenge of get a massage and relax. I have done the 10,000 steps a month, which is Ren's lifestyle challenge. I am currently prepping my body by doing five thousand steps and I've done it for 11 days and currently dying but that's fine we'll get there this is going to be glorious but I do have plans for this to be accomplished. I read the next two Realm of the Elderlings books for Amy's book challenge and haven't continued on with the final one which is the first in the Dragon Quartet. I can't remember what that one's called but that's the last one I have to read and I can mark this off but I just completely procrastinated on it. And then the randomized series I have completed because I'm putting it in the bottom one so that I can get a bingo. I'll probably go down the side, but just in case I'm trying to be strategic about this. So that means I get to tick off five things. Let's get some bats. So the stickers that I'm using and I have used for the past few years to mark this off are Fox and Cactus and I will leave their YouTube channel and store down below because I love them. Bats and bats and bats and bats. One day of that. One city trip. 
one jigsaw, a massage and relax, and a randomized series. Yay! Oh my god, it's actually filling up. <laughs> this feels good. This feels good. So, the randomized series was in one of my TBR videos. I think it might have been my May June. Pluto. I ended up randomizing the Shadow Glass series, which I then did in the 3 and 3 vlog. So that was exciting. But I have also done it in my July, August, is that right? TBR video. So if I end up reading those, I can tick off the other corner. So that would be lovely. And there's plans for the activities. It's the books that are the problem. Not a problem, but there's just a lot. There's a lot of them. The next section is based around my 2020 to 2023 book hauls. The first is my book haul revisited. I technically haven't kept on track because I haven't finished On a Beautiful Day by Lucy Diamond, but I did start it. I just started it in Fiji and haven't come back to it yet, but I will. Then I wanted to read 35 books from my 2020 to 2022 book hauls. Eight from 2020, 12 from 2021, and 15 from 2022. I've read two from 2020, the entire 12 from 2021, and six from my 2022. So 57% completed. Then I wanted to read half of the remaining books from my 2023 haul, which would be 16 books from there. Didn't read any in quarter two, but I had read 10 in quarter one, so we're okay. 62% <laughs> completed, but didn't touch any in the last quarter, so oh dear god. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. I can do this. And then for my book buying, I've got a few sub goals. The first is keeping under the budget of $1,200, which is on track. I've only spent $258.42. That is creeping up, but I've also been buying things from Collins a lot more and purchasing things that I've been really excited for. I did go on a bit of a splurge earlier in the year, but we've curved back a little bit. So like I spent $178 in the first quarter and then we're now only sitting at 258 at the end of the second. So it definitely curved <laughs> that. I wanted to read two books off my TBR to be able to add one. And I did fall behind in quarter one, but we're back on track, baby. So collectively I've read 52 books off my TBR so I could add 26 unread and reading through some of my 2024 purchases, I have got it to sit at 26 unread and that's marvelous. I will keep chipping away at it and lowering it, but we're back. Then my goal was to read 50% read to unread for my 2024 haul, and we were sitting at 23 at the end of quarter one. We're now sitting at 38%. So should I have hope? I don't know. And I keep being called to quite a few of the ones that I have hauled this year. So, you know, this might be a possibility. I'm also reading more from my library. Oh my god. And then I do the $1 for every 100 pages that I've read and I've read 18,768 pages so that's 187 as I haven't rounded up to 188 yet. Sad it doesn't match the 258 2 that I've already spent but that's totally fine. I don't ever aim to have them match. It was just really cool last year seeing that they did. Then for my community challenges. For Bookstara, I'm on track. I've read where we're supposed to be up to. Had a glorious time with the Greenbone Saga. Now starting the Good Girls Guide to Murder series for the second half of the year. Very excited for that. Gerbertathon, I'm so sorry. I haven't even looked at it. I've just... It was poor planning on my part to take on such big yearly challenges. It fabulous. I'm still in the Discord, still seeing what everyone's up to and able to do. I just, I don't have the spoons to allocate shit to it at the moment. My, I'm so sorry. Because Pokemon is my third goal and that has taken up so much time and attention and energy. Like, I love it. I'm so happy with that. But the spoons being delegated there and my bookish peeps, that has been what my priority has gone to and series as well. That's how my readings sort of been shaped, which cool. But because of that, I am sitting at 55 of the 116 prompts, 117 main prompts completed and then there are additional ones that pop up every so often. 
for the Roadhouse Readathon. Most books I have read I've assigned and I have read 70 out of the 80 prompts. So very happy with that. Buzzwordathon, I am on track. I did read May's book in June. That's so funny because I read January's in February and then May's in June, but I'm doing it. And then for TBR Knockout, I'm on track. I sort of actively think of things that I'm going to put towards those at the beginning of the year and then can just switch out if need be. But because they're a lot more aligned with my reading, maybe it's easier for me to find things on my shelves. So it's easy for me to stay on track with TBR Knockout. And I haven't, I can't remember if I've switched out any books that weren't physical reads because I try to keep it so that it's coming from my shelves. Then I have my side quest bookish goals. So for my scratch amount, just want to read one. Haven't done that. Don't know if I will do this this year because nothing is calling to me from that map. We shall see. Number two, I wanted to read six nonfiction and or participate in nonfiction November. Obviously, November hasn't rolled around yet, but I have read three nonfiction collectively. I read two in quarter one and one in quarter two, but we've done one graphic novel and two novels. I wanted to finish my rainbow shelf and this goal has been haunting me, haunting me for four years, I think. I don't even remember when I started this, but I had, I think, five at the beginning of the year. I have read one in quarter one, but also added another one because I got Concrete Rose and that's an orange vine and The Hate You Give is also up there. So I wanted to keep them together, you know, cute. And On The Come Up's also up there. So it was like, it's sort of, they're thematically tied. So I still had five left. I have read two. I read the one that I added, which was Concrete Rose, because the second I bought it, I read it. And then I actually picked up The Kiss Quotient, which I wasn't planning on doing, but amazing readathon. So that was the first book in a series. So that was the only one I was hesitant about actually starting this year. And I've started it. So now I have a series finale and two standalones to read. So I'm not putting any eggs in baskets, but this may be the year. This stops haunting me. And then read my 2022 extended self-destruct one i won't be reading this year it is the first in the series and it's also a saint martin's press i'm really really excited to get to it but i'm just not going to the prison healer i have started and paused on can't remember why but i did and then teacher we'll see how that one goes it might be a non-fiction november read it might be a continue to procrastinate this book until my dying day I also filmed my 2023 self-destruct review, didn't post it, didn't edit it, probably going to refilm it because I just wasn't vibing that day and I don't want to be a miserable sod. But I have the conclusion to it, so it's a few more to go on the list. Then for my side quest community challenges, uh, for Aurelium I'm on track, so love that. For Read My Bookshelf, I haven't even looked at it and I'm probably not going to. I don't think I will be able to backdate my reads successfully. Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, haven't looked at once again. It's just as I do. And then the A to Z challenge. I did actually look at what I've got and going through author surname, I'm missing I, Q, U, V, Y, and Z. And could I count Emily XR Pan? I don't have any other X authored surnames on my physical TBR or plans to read. So could I count Emily XR Pan? Usually I would put it under P. But for this, could we make an exception? Let me know. And then that's all of my bookish and community. So my channel goals. Wanted to bring back Cluedo. Did absolutely loving the chaos. Holy mother of sweet lord. The last round just killed me. I'll leave a link below. You hear my soul leave my body? It's great. Also, please don't wear headphones while listening to it or turn the volume down. Live shows I wanted to do once a month at a minimum and I've done four on my channel but I have been live on other people's channels, mainly Bookstar, for sprints throughout the months that I wasn't online. So I'm gonna count that as, you know, I'm still on track with that goal. I've been finding that dice sprints in the Discord, the Who Done It Discord, has worked really, really well for my reading, not having to be on camera if I wasn't in the mood. So yeah, live streams, I love them, but I don't know, I find them exhausting. Like, and not in a bad way, but I don't always have that amount of spoons in a month to be able to give to. But if you want to sprint and read with me, I'm on the whodunit Discord nightly <laughs> doing dice sprints. So if you're interested, that's where I'm doing it at the moment. And it was funny because when I started doing this, it reminded me that this is what I used to do before I started my channel for the Sims Readathon on 
Twitter was doing sprints, text-based. So I'm like, yeah, this is great. Chaos Chat with Ash. We have the concept. We wanted to do a deep dive into The Matrix and talking about the whole movie series, but Ash and I just haven't had the spoons as of late. We're both just in a rather transitionary state and that's totally fine. I'm not going to force him to do anything and spend a weekend getting this organized and having to use our brains if he just needs to relax and if he does have energy and I don't I'm not going to force myself either so we've got the concepts we've actually got quite a few ideas that we want to discuss and we have discussed potentially if I did ever start a patreon that would probably be where we would end up taking it but at the moment I'm still happy to do it without a paywall <laughs> It's just, you know, saying controversial shit on the internet is always a great time. Then I wanted to do a minimum of three themed vlogs and think I've done that because I did one week one shelf and swapping my screen time for reading and I've done my Fiji vlog and I've also filmed the three and three vlog throughout June. Then I wanted to find my groove with ideas and be more involved with like my friends and their readathons and... Uh, I'm unsure. I thought at the beginning of the year I was doing really good, but I just, I don't feel like I've been as present this year for my friends and I feel really shit about that. But also people understand that, you know, I have a life, a full-time job and this is a wonderful hobby. But if I don't have spoons to dedicate to a readathon to read particular criteria, they understand. My dedication to Pokemon, <laughs> whilst I'm not active in the Discord, I'm constantly talking about it, well, with people at least, and I would love to be more present for my friends, so I'm sorry that I haven't been, and I don't know if I can tick this off. I definitely have made some changes to my filming ideas and what I want to do, so I'm tentatively seeing how that goes, and I think it's going to be a really good change for myself. Then again, I wanted to promote channels more, and I'm doing okay. I definitely can always do better, but I also don't want to just like for my booktuber shout out that I did, I found that these were people that I'd been watching a lot of their content and just every time they popped up in my subscription feed, I was like, yay, oh, and I have quite a few people that I do that for, but I also want to savor them. So then when I do want to, you know, I don't want to just bombard people with recommendations of others. I want to be able to space it out and be like, hey, like these people are still awesome. Like, let's keep it going, keep the momentum going, but not overdo it. But I could definitely take an example of Leandra from TBR Zero. And for her TBRs this year, she is watching someone else's and promoting the channel that way. Oh, I could do Audacity August. Oh, <gasps> cause Aurelium's not happening. And then I just have to deal with Pickpongathon. Ooh. So one vlog concept I had previously, vlog concept, I can't remember, was Audacity August and I was combining Pickpongathon, Aurelium and stealing people's TBR games to pick my next book. And I've wanted to do another rendition of it again. So with Aurelium out of the picture, that might make it a little bit easier, but I also have my own set list of reads. So I'm finding it harder to sort of have that freedom to, <laughs> I can steal the prompt rather than the book that they choose themselves, which is what I did before. But one round, I would love to just, whatever that is, is the book that I read. Not at that level of freedom for my TBRs at the moment, but I think I might look into doing Audacity August. This could be very interesting. Very, very interesting. I think I've just got a great idea. We'll promote more. We can do this. And then I want to utilize the readathon form that I created. So when I do my readathon videos at the end of every month for what's coming up, I don't have to synthesize as many readathons into this tiny little noggin and spit them out. I can just have people talk about it in their own words, which I feel is much more authentic and much more succinct. <laughs> and yes, I have been utilizing this and also I'm going to never shut up about this, but thank you Martine for doing my readathon video in May. I was unwell and had been in Fiji and it just, it was a shit show and I couldn't. And they, I put it out, they stepped up and I just, oh, thank you. I have yet to find a good balance with the readathon videos and so them doing that for me was an absolute godsend and I appreciate them more than I could possibly ever communicate. <laughs> so yeah, that's my goals. So utilizing the form and you know, just having a great time. Ah, oh, oh, whilst I feel like I'm behind on some goals, I don't feel bad. <laughs> and for the community challenges, 
I knew when I was making these that I had bit off way more than I could chew. So that's why I made them side quests because I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna get to these. And I'm sad, but it's okay. It's just reading. I have dedicated my time in a way that I'm feeling really positive about, which has been really lacking recently well, for a little while with my reading. I haven't felt I was succeeding, but how do you succeed at reading? I'm always reading things that I enjoy, if not love, so that's pretty successful to me. But I don't know, it was just this weird headspace and I still haven't quite figured it out. But I definitely, looking at where I'm at with my goals currently, feeling really, really, really good. Obviously, I can always put in a little bit more effort for ones that I want to, but overall, I think I'm doing pretty good. And the bookish peeves and bookymon, the combination of those two is just, it's a real interesting mix. And I don't know, I think I've really enjoyed my TBRs this year, and I've really enjoyed Cluedo being stretched over two months. It's a lot more relaxing for me and the fact that basically I can swap anything out at any given time there is no consequences it's just how I needed to make those changes because I wanted to be able to keep playing it but I also did want to feel like I was succeeding in my goals so I think I've managed that I'm definitely curious to see how this 300 plus pages goes because I keep dipping up dipping up dipping up so we'll see and I'm really proud of my series I know that I've started quite a few but I have ticked off a lot off my list already and it's feeling really good. I'm feeling quite fresh. Same with my Read My Rainbow. Those series have been sitting there for a long time. Those rainbow books have been sitting there for a long time and I'm finally clearing away some of the backlog and I realized that one of my goals that shot me in the foot is I want to be reading the things that I've owned the longest but I don't actually have a goal for that because I was going off my book hauls and a lot of stuff isn't included on my book hauls because I bought it before I started tracking it and I have sort of made peace with that fluctuation and not being able to put it or mark it towards a goal because it was even older than my goals. So I don't know, it just feels nice. I feel like my shelves are finally getting to a place that I'm feeling really comfortable with and I can, you know, buy a couple of things and splurge or buy a couple of things and know that I'm going to get to them sooner rather than later. It's really just the first books in series that are the things that are stuck on my shelves that I'm not actively prioritizing because I want to finish them off first. So we'll see what we get up to, but I am really proud considering how many goals I have, where I'm at with most of them. And even if I'm behind and, and or don't end up succeeding with them, okay, it's okay. I'm really proud of the progress that I have made and how actively I've been trying to make this work. It feels good. It feels real good. So yeah, let me know in the comments how you're going with your goals and or any thoughts and opinions that you have on mine. I know that it is chaos and an absolute bucket ton, but it's interesting making a TBR with these in mind. <laughs> so let me know any thoughts and feelings you have in the comments down below. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this mess, feel free to subscribe. I'll hopefully see you on my next video.